Some developing news now at five felony murder charges against two men accused of killing a nine year old girl in December are headed to a grand jury. A judge deciding today prosecutors have enough evidence to move forward against Tyrone Williams and Darius Lucky. Our Brendan Kirby is very is joining us now with the very latest on this heartbreaking case. Brendan, a lot of testimony and a lot of it like what we heard during the Anaya's law hearing. Yeah, it was somewhat repetitive, Lanise, but the defense lawyer said that they did learn a few things. They focused on the role of two people who were present for that drive-by shooting but haven't been charged. Prosecutors say there may be additional arrests. Mobile Police Corporal Jermaine Rogers on Tuesday laying out the timeline of nine-year-old Kaylee Knight's violent death. It began at 12.32 a.m. on the morning of December 5th when surveillance video shows a car belonging to a woman named Ricky Thier leaving Anton Square Apartments in 8 Mile, where defendant Ariel Curry lived. Nine minutes later, according to Corporal Rogers' testimony, 17 shots riddled a home on Racine Avenue. There's no video of that, but the detective says the evidence indicates that co-defendant Tyrone Williams fired those shots at the home of Curry's ex-boyfriend. Surveillance video shows the car returning to Anton Square Apartments at 1.12 a.m. and leaving again at 1.38 a.m., this time with co-defendant Darius Lucky inside. Surveillance video shows the driver and passenger switching seats on Athey Road at 1.51 a.m. Three minutes later, Corporal Rogers testified a bullet killed Knight while she was sleeping on her couch on Red Drive. Corporal Rogers said several occupants of the car provided this account. Curry was driving, Williams shot a 9mm pistol, and Lucky fired a rifle. Corporal Rogers testified they were targeting Kaylee's older brother in retaliation for stealing a gun from Williams several days earlier. Defense attorneys Willie Huntley and James Byrd focused their cross-examination on three other people present in the vehicle. The car's owner, Thier, a friend of hers, and a man who has not been identified. That's all they can rely on is three people that were in the car, that were involved, that haven't been charged. That's the most interesting thing I think came out, that those three were there, knew about everything that was going on, and they still haven't been charged. I'm not sure why they haven't charged them because those young ladies admitted they participated in the planning, were aware of the plan, rode with the vehicle, and the only people incriminating my client and Mr. Lucky are those girls. Mobile County District Attorney Keith Blackwood says his office cut no deals. The picture and involvement of some of the uh, uncharged uh, people uh, is becoming more clear. Uh, they were not charged in the beginning. Uh, however, like I said, these investigations are always ongoing and the entirety of the investigation will be presented to a grand jury. Corporal Rogers says surveillance footage from Anton Square Apartments shows that the defendants pulled in at about 2.05 a.m., 11 minutes after the shooting. He testified those people acted like they were panicking at 2.11 a.m. as if they had gotten bad news and then pulling away at 2.17 a.m. Corporal Rogers says that shell casings found on Racine Avenue and Rhett Drive both matched the pistol the police say Williams had. Curry, the alleged driver, wasn't in court today. She gave up her right to a preliminary hearing. Reporting live in the News Center, Brendan Kirby, Fox 10 News.